Okay, so let's move on to uh, the Curiosity rover. And it has been on on the surface now for, uh, let's see, it landed in August of 2012, so I guess seven, seven years. And uh, it's day 2571 since landing. Um, this was just a selfie that the rover took uh, a year or so ago of it uh, doing an analysis of a, an area of, of very smooth rocks. And so there's a couple new, new things from older data that I wanted to go into. But first, just to set the scene, this is Gale Crater, where the spacecraft landed. This was the target. Ah, come on. The target area. Um, and this is what's called Mount Sharp. It's an 18,000 foot high mountain of sedimentary rock that is in the center of Gale Crater. And that's really the reason that they went there. You'll notice in several locations uh, around the side, there are actually gullies uh, or riverbeds actually flowing down into the crater. And that gives a good indication that at some point in the past, this crater was filled with liquid water and uh, it would have been a crater lake. And so the layers in this, uh, this mountain, each layer would have been laid down at a different time. You get younger and younger as you get higher up the mountain. And uh, so the whole purpose of this mission, which is really Curiosity is a robotic geochemist, it's to measure the composition of the rocks, how it changes from layer to layer, and then that relates back to what the environment was like when the rocks were formed. And uh, the idea is to determine if this area could have supported primitive life, microbes, at some point in the past. Because uh, right now, there is no liquid water on the planet, and it's not even stable, so at some point in the past, and we're still trying to understand how long ago that was, likely more than a, a couple billion years, the atmosphere was much thicker, it was much wetter, and uh, so that's the, the lay of the land. Um, and here's a- In 2012, NASA's Curiosity rover went to Mars to explore video Gale Crater, just describing a large impact why we went with a massive Gale. layered mountain in the middle. How did this strange landscape come to be? And what can its history teach us about the potential for life on Mars? After several years of exploration, here's what we think could have happened. Around 3.7 billion years ago, a large meteor impact blasts out the initial crater, cracking the rock below and leaving a central peak as the surface rebounds. It's a wetter time in Mars history. Groundwater seeps into the new crater, while rivers fed by rain or melting snow also flow in forming a large lake and carrying in gravel, sand, and silt. This material keeps building up over millions of years, and as each layer cements into rock, it records a snapshot of the environment that shaped it. In time, the gradual drying of Mars shuts off the rivers, but sediment keeps piling up as sand and dust blow into the crater, deeply burying the deposits laid down in water. Meanwhile, groundwater remains deep below the dusty surface. At some point, winds that once carried sediment in begin scouring it back out. In areas closer to the crater rim, these winds dig all the way down into the ancient lake deposits. And as the heavy weight above is lifted, these layers crack, which helps groundwater flow through and alter them again before they dry out. By about three billion years ago, we're left with the basic form we see today. And it's in this version of Gale Crater that Curiosity has helped piece together the story. Sediment patterns show a lot of water was present continually over many millions of years, both as persistent groundwater and a long-standing lake with occasional dry spells. Mineral and chemical readings show that water from both the lake and subsurface was friendly for potential microbes. Drill samples from the lake bed show key elements, organic molecules, nutrients, and energy sources that microbes could have used. 
Water flowing through underground fractures could have supported life even in deeply buried rocks. And the composition of some layers makes them good for preserving potential signs of past life. Taken together, the evidence points to Gale Crater, and Mars in general, as a place where life, if it ever arose, might have survived for some time. With our primary mission fulfilled, we continue exploring, uncovering the history of Mars, and learning more about how and where future missions can search for the signatures that ancient life may have left behind. Okay, so what he said. Um, so where we are, well, this is where we've been and where we are as well. So this was the landing site in August of 2012. And Mount Sharp is all the way into the basement here, down in this direction. But uh, from where they landed, there was a thick deposit of sand dunes, this dark stuff, and they could not just drive straight across that to get to the mountain because they, they were very afraid of, uh, of getting stuck in the, in the sand. And so they've been uh, creeping along, paralleling the sand dunes until they got over here where there's actually gaps in the, the sand cover and they could break through and uh, uh, start moving toward the foothills of, of Mount Sharp. Um, but as they've been doing this, they've been, of course, stopping and sampling all of the different deposits they've been uh, crossing. And in general, the, the uh, surface slopes, it, it's lower here and it gets higher and higher as you move south. So they've already climbed multiple hundreds of meters in elevation, but uh, right now they are they are right here, and I'll show you a, a close-up of that shortly. But the, uh, uh, the result I wanted to discuss, and I will in a couple of slides, is right here. It's about, uh, it was in 2017, and uh, I'll show you that in just a second. But first, this is what Mount Sharp looks like from the rover, and uh, they're basically heading in in uh, depressions to get to these foothills. And this gives you a little bit uh, closer view of all the, the wonderful layers in Mount Sharp. And all of this really rough stuff, they think is dust that came in later that is capping the mountain. But uh, they're probably only going to get up into this area uh, eventually, but that's the general target that they're after. And this is just a, uh, an animation of their, their path. Right now, they're sitting over in this general area. And so they're on a, uh, what they're calling the clay bearing unit. And from orbit, we get the signature of clays. This is uh, where they're looking for evidence of groundwater uh, soaking into the uh, the deposits that were already there and altering them by uh, the presence of this groundwater. So uh, ultimately, we'll then start climbing up as far as they can get in, uh, into the uh, uh, mountain. So this is the result that was just released in this last month. This is a, an area that they were at, uh, as I said, in 2017, and they stopped and spent a lot of time analyzing this rock. And they call it, or nicknamed it, Old Soaker. Um, it, after all the analysis, they believe this was mud at some point. And as it dried out, you get these little cracks of, uh, in, in the mud. And uh, then it, gets uh, hardened into rock, and there are cracks in it that other uh, mineral deposits have, have been uh, laid down in, so you still have a little bit of water coming through this, and, and this is uh, gypsum, just like you see in, uh, in drywall, and that's an indication of, uh, of uh, very 
neutral water, sort of like fresh water coming through that has this calcium sulfate um, dissolved in it. But the new result is they, they actually collected samples of this rock and, and the onboard instruments actually take a long time to process uh, these samples. And so they do the more important ones first and then when they can, they'll, they'll start on one, but they can, or start on another one, but they can store the powder that they got from drilling into these deposits and then process it later. And so they've just released the results of this and it turns out it's consistent with the basic mud being laid down in a very, very salty environment. So it wasn't, just a pond like we'd have out here in City Park. It's more of a, a very, uh, uh, well, the Great Salt Lake is probably less salty than what, uh, what they're saying this, this would be. And so the model is that early on, you had water running into this area. It was underwater. And then as the, uh, as the environment changed, the uh, the water evaporated and, uh, and you were left with more and more concentration of the salts in the, in the remaining little, uh, little ponds and lakes. And so this is an example of what that might have, uh, have looked like. This is a, a very briny lake in uh, Chile. And uh, this is exactly what they think uh, that old soaker rock would have been uh, in the in the mud at the at the lake bed. Okay, and another uh, thing that was just released. This was only a couple um, weeks ago. Another selfie that the the rover has taken, and this gives you a good uh, view of of uh, sort of where they are. So this uh, I'm not sure if you can read this, but this ridge back here, Vera Rubin, was. Uh, the target for about a year and a half of, of work. And they've just, in the last couple of months, proceeded beyond that. And uh, uh, Vera Rubin had a lot of uh, hematite in it, iron, iron sulfate. And uh, that also indicates very acidic water. And so that was a, a different environment than what we're seeing here. And here is, they're in that clay unit now. And so this is much more uh, uh, fresh water, if you will. And uh, so they're, they're just now starting to uh, proceed across this. And so they're actually heading, uh, well, Mount Sharp is here, but this is a very wide fisheye view. So they're going to be heading off sort of in this direction ultimately to get to those foothills. Okay, so where they are right now is proceeding towards uh, this area. It's called uh, Central Butte, is what they've nicknamed it. And what they're interested in are all of these layered rocks at the bottom of that. And you can see that a little better, all these, these uh, laminated rocks. And this, they think, is going to be, a, since it's higher now, it's going to be a different environment than what they looked at a couple of years ago where they were in these, uh, these laminated rocks as well. So this really is the, the true beginning now of this campaign to, to monitor or to determine the, uh, the environment of discrete layers as you start moving up the, the side of, of the mountain. And so they're probably going to try getting at least part way up this. They're certainly not going to climb this steep slope, but they will have access to the, the things on the lower flanks of that, that butte. And where they are, this was taken yesterday, and this is just looking back at the, the tracks it's left behind. There's uh, that ridge, Vera Rubin, that they were uh, studying for for such a long time. And uh, you can tell that they're now climbing as well. You're getting a, a, 
much better view across the floor of the crater. And by the way, this is the, the rim of the crater. It's a couple of tens of kilometers off in the distance. So here's the, the recap on, uh, on the mission. Today is, is day 2571. It's driven about uh, 21 kilometers and returned over 600,000 images. So uh, everything continues to, uh, to work well on, on uh, curiosity. <laughs>